you're listening to a podcast from digitaloilandgas.com. This podcast is entitled, If Watson Spoke Engineer, What Would She Say? There's some pioneering work underway at Woodside Energy and Artificial Intelligence that has far-reaching implications for digital oil and gas. I was part of APIA's official social media team at their recent annual conference in Perth and had a chance to take in a presentation from Woodside's data science team. Woodside's executive is investing in some very innovative, practical digital solutions for oil and gas. Well, first, uh, let's dig into the business problem. Some of Australia's West Coast offshore gas facilities have been in production for decades and want to be in production for decades more. The same ambition, a long and productive industrial life, is true for all of Canada's oil sands mining assets, and I suspect for assets in other mature basins like the North Sea. Not only do these assets handily outlast their designers, but they're now outlasting their maintenance engineering staff, their operations teams, their logistics managers. In short, the complete original workforce. But the oil and gas industry has long relied on the memory of its people to retrieve critical information about its assets, information beyond the kinds of data easily found in modern systems. Answers to questions like, why did we design it this way? And have we encountered this problem before? all of which depend on the memories of workers. One of my clients once told me that the human workforce that manages complex assets involuntarily commit the assets to memory over time. It just happens. Wetware memory has worked reliably for decades, although it breaks down when in times of high turnover. One of the oil sands companies has told me that when turnover breaches 7% annually, corporate memory falters. One might ask why an industrial enterprise would design its business with important information about its operations able to just walk away. Well, frankly, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Several trends are at play, though, that are forcing exploration of new ways to approach this situation. First is the changing workforce composition. The teams of people who look after these oil and gas plants are changing composition and quickly. There are more contractors and outsourced services and outsourced service providers. The average age of the oil industry prior to the price drop in 2015 was 55 or greater, and much of this gray gold has cashed in and left the industry to retire, taking their memories with them and leaving behind a much younger and less experienced team. Not only has turnover breached 7%, but frankly, it's the wrong 7%. Fortunately, the new workforce has been exposed to how technology has impacted other sectors like banking, retail, entertainment, and so forth, and are more open to experiment with modern tools. Second has the large and growing accumulated intellectual property about oil and gas. Oil and gas facilities accumulate lots of studies over the years. Reports, diagrams, emails, meeting notes, investigations, spreadsheets, analysis. It's a pretty large pile, and it's growing all the time as businesses mature and as facilities owners give frequent thought to things like debottlenecking, capacity expansions, growth, cost reductions, quality improvements, and so on. Keeping tabs on it all is a challenge. Next is the expanding complexity of the documentation. As time marches on, the content itself changes too. It's becoming more comprehensive, more complex, lengthier, and richer. Better tools, techniques, and technologies mean that studies can cover more ground and can be richer in terms of actual content. Instead of just one computation carried out by slide ruler in 1960, modern computers can run millions of simulations under different assumption sets, all captured in the studies. And last but not least is technological obsolescence. Even the technology used to create content can be a hindrance. Tools obsolesce and are abandoned as better ones come along, potentially stranding the analysis and the work products over time. This situation creates a number of risks that, in times of high oil and gas prices and light regulation, facilities owners comfortably address by retaining large numbers of high-salaried employees. Well, those days are certainly behind us now. How much time might be spent by time-stressed valuable engineers just locating old but valuable studies? The presenters in Perth estimated that some 80% of engineering time was typically occupied with finding documents and reading them to discover what, if anything, could be useful. That's a lot of valuable engineering cycles that could otherwise be devoted to more valuable activities like, say, engineering. Aside from low productivity and the high cost of search services by using engineers, this approach can easily speed up or scale up. 
people can't simply read faster, and sometimes it's not feasible to throw more engineers into the search task. I can imagine that in certain times, as when something unexpected happens, the pressure to find the right prior analysis becomes super critical. Third risk is this high operational risk. A process that is highly dependent on people's memory is risky. When the outcome is based on finding the right document or collection of documents and avoiding the wrong documents. Those people might not be there and the memory can be faulty. When that documentation is important for the in-the-moment operations, then operational risks will be higher. And the fourth risk is the redundant spend problem. What happens when some piece of analysis can't be found? Oil companies often find themselves purchasing the same analysis or data over and over simply because they couldn't find it the first time and presumed it was lost. Are there solutions to these kinds of challenges? Well, if there's one thing that computers are already very good at, it's sifting through mountains of documentation to quickly find things that match a set of criteria. Just look at how good Google is at finding web pages and documents based on just a few key words. And if there's something that computers are getting very good at, it's interpreting spoken language and figuring out what humans actually mean. So what if we combine the very best in content capture, search, and language processing? Imagine being able to ask, that is, not type, a complex engineering question with all its jargon to a system that contained all company prior content, and the system could quickly, within a couple of seconds, return every page of every document that matched the question, ranked by best fit. Imagine asking a more precise question with fewer possible answers, and it returns the most likely answer along with the evidence to justify its reasoning. Imagine being able to teach the system over time so that it gets smarter at interpreting questions and identifying answer sources that are more reliable. This is like having the memories of every former and current engineer, every former and current contractor, every former and current specialist, and all of their accumulated expertise in one super quick engineer who can do 80% of the job practically instantly, get smarter with every question, never sleeps, and never takes leave. What's that worth? Well, squillions, frankly. The combination of technologies like AdLib, which normalizes all the content uh, available from all these prior studies, including the really old documents, and, and reducing those to a common searchable format, and IBM Watson, who processes language queries and searches the content, creates the virtual engineer of the future. Where would this apply? Well, good question. What are the use cases? Well, the first use case for accessing engineering documentation works perfectly well in many instances. Oil sands, plants, mines, refineries, petrochemical plants. In essence, that's the Woodside project that's just taken to several other organizations and, and sectors. But here are several more. How about reservoir analysis? Aspects of reservoir analysis would be good candidates for a dose of cognitive computing and artificial intelligence. Finding and sifting through well logs, drilling records, land documents, and reservoir studies surely takes up considerable time by petroleum engineers who would probably prefer to spend their time in analysis. How about during mergers? Frequently in the merger uh, situations, companies rationalize workforces to take advantage of scale economies but sacrifice corporate memory. Applying AdLib and Watson to a merger is like keeping a portion of all prior employees as part of the new organization and not just the engineers but also those in parts of the business most impacted in mergers. And here I'm thinking about IT, supply chain, HR, finance, and of course the corporate departments. How about contract analysis? Oil and gas businesses strangle themselves with contracts and keeping tabs on them is painful. Contract managers would likely value having a rich conversation with their contracts database where they could ask which contract is most current, what terms are in force, which contracts are going to expire, and when. And then finally, how about just general Q&A? There's lots of other random questions in everyday life at an oil and gas facility. What time does the next vessel arrive? And when was the last time that valve was repacked? And is there anyone on crew with a certificate in high voltage? And how many valves by this manufacturer are on site, including those in inventory? These are the kinds of questions that IBM Watson and soon his avatar siblings are now able to answer. I'm immensely grateful for the kind assistance of Chris Keeling of AdLib Software, who helped with some of the use cases. You have been listening to a podcast from digitaloilgas.com. If you like what you've heard, please subscribe to future installments 
and visit us at digitalorgas.com.